Ayodhya judgment is a judgment of five learned judges of the Supreme Court. Right? So it can't be, uh, you know, wished away. How long can the Supreme Court, uh, you know, say that, well, you know, we'll hear it in good time. I think that there are certain matters which have to be heard urgently. From Gyanwapi to Mathura to Kutub Minar, there appears to be a strategy being employed via such petitions and suits being filed in various courts in the country, the target of which seem to be the minority communities or the rights of the minority communities. How dangerous is it that the higher courts of the country are unable to nip this in the bud? You see, it's like this. Uh, anybody and everybody has a right to access the court. Right. So, if somebody feels aggrieved by a certain situation or a person has some sort of a grievance, uh, it doesn't matter whether it is Gyan Vapi or whether it is uh, Qutub Minar or Taj Mahal or anything, that person can approach the court. Now, uh, there are two things, you know, one is an individual can go and approach the court or as you seem to suggest, there seems to be some sort of a, uh, you know, uh, well, uh, you know, arrangement that a lot of people have entered into that each one of them will start filing cases in different parts of the, uh, you know, with respect to different places and in other parts of the country. Now, I'm not sure whether there is such an organized effort. There may be, but I don't know. Uh, now, if it is there, uh, you know, then uh, of course uh, something has to be done about it because you can't have hundreds of cases being filed in Agra, for example, with regard to the Taj Mahal, or hundreds of cases being filed in Delhi with regard to uh, the Qutub Minar. You know, then the system will just completely break down. So, uh, unfortunately, the law doesn't take care of this, you know. So that, that is really the problem. If there was a law, you know, which says that if, uh, you know, after 10 cases, we will not entertain 11th case, you know, then things would be different. But the law doesn't say anything like this. So a thousand people can file a thousand cases. You can't stop them. Is there no way at all that the Supreme Court can pass orders with this bigger picture consideration in mind? The Supreme Court can't pass, uh, you know, a blanket order of this nature. Right. You know, there has to be a reason to pass an order. Right. I mean, it will be very strange, you know, if the Supreme Court passes an order and says that, well, you know, people cannot file cases with regard to Qutub Minar. What is the justification for that? Right. But if a case does come before the Supreme Court with regard to one of these, uh, you know, places, then the Supreme Court can say, all right, since we are seized of the matter, uh, other courts will not, uh, you know, entertain a petition. So until that happens, there's very little that the Supreme Court can do. Uh, it is possible, you know, that when the matter first came up before the Supreme Court, uh, I don't know if the Supreme Court had anticipated that uh, this sort of a thing is likely to happen, you know, where hundreds of cases are going to be filed. The Supreme Court could have intervened at that stage, but perhaps the Supreme Court did not, uh, you know, anticipate it. Or I don't know what happened. Uh, but unless some case comes up before the Supreme Court, they just can't, you know, on their own say that all right, you know, people should not file cases. So the Supreme Court, while hearing the Gyan Vapi case, uh, suggested that the 1991 Act does not create a bar on proceedings to assess the religious character of a particular place of worship. This was part of a larger verbal code by, made by Justice Chandrachud. But uh, would an observation such as this one not defeat the very purpose of the law? Yeah, well, I, I would not like to comment on, uh, you know, what has been orally said uh, by one of the learned judges. Um, uh, but yes, you know, 
it, it, it's a question of fact. What was the religious character of a particular place on 15th of August 1947? Is there any dispute about it? If there is no dispute about it, uh, well, why create a dispute if there is no dispute? Right? Um, for example, uh, you know, you, you, you take any, any religious place of, uh, you know, worship. If there is no dispute that it was a church or that it was a temple or that it was a mosque, then why, why raise a dispute and say, no, 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 you see on 15th August, it was not a, it was not a you know, church or a mosque or a temple, whatever. So not just pertaining to the Gyan Babi mosque matter, but in a more general sense, uh, including the sedition proceedings and just things that have recently happened, the Supreme Court seems to be balancing interests. But in doing so, they are perhaps somehow failing to address legal questions. Do you think that's happening? And in doing so, are they failing to protect their own previous decisions? The Supreme Court has uh, all courts, actually. Uh, it's not a question of only balancing interests. It's also a question of balancing rights. I mean, the Supreme Court has not taken a decision as yet on uh, you know some of these issues. But it is time that the Supreme Court starts speaking. It's, it's hearing of some of these cases. I mean, there are so many of them. Whether it is sedition, whether it is electoral, to, uh, the Places of Worship uh, Act. So, you know, how, how long can the Supreme Court, uh, you know, say that? Well, you know, we'll hear it in good time. I think that there are certain matters which have to be heard urgently, and uh, these are some of them which should be heard urgently. Right, sir. My final question, sir, would be that um, so the Article Judgment it notes that historical wrongs cannot be remedied. Uh, by the people taking the law in their own hands and also carries a very strong message about non-retrogression. So, uh, I wanted to understand petitions have also, and there's chatter about it and also petitions challenging the constitutionality of Places of Worship Act have been filed in various courts. Can the whole segment of on non-retrogression in the Ayodhya judgment be applied to avoid not just similar suits but also a potential repeal of the 1991 Act? Uh, yes, certainly. I mean, if, if uh, the matter comes up, uh, certainly, yes. You see, the Ayodhya judgment is a judgment of five learned judges of the Supreme Court. Right? So, it can't be, uh, you know, wished away. Right? Uh, so, it is it is binding law as and when uh, an issue does arise in any, in any one of these courts, whether it is, uh, you know, the district court or the high court or the Supreme Court, um, they're bound by the judgment. You know, until the judgment is set aside by a larger bench of seven judges.